The original story contains content that is not safe for work and may not be suitable for all audiences. If you are an underage or overly sensitive individual, I suggest you to just click off the video. Enjoy at your own risk. The forehead of your robot. I was a porn director who made movies in the states where it is illegal. Other than the general thrill of being bad watching nymphs go at each other for nice sums of money, I enjoyed the sense of creating sensual body art in the conceited and hypocritical society we live in. Nothing turns people on more than love making and politics. Several times I have had legal trouble, Title 18, Section 1465, and even more times have I been prepared with an attorney on the speed dial just in case. However, call it ignorance if you will, but I continued making these dirty movies. My only rules in the business were to, A, know my boundaries, B, never step in front of the camera, C, have talent show identification and the most important, D, never touch alcohol on set. When you make porn it can very well be as easy as it sounds. However, there are things you must be wary of, namely who you surround yourself with, who may cause you more problems than facing the said lawsuits. One such case began in the fall of 2011, after I had come off a five-year retirement from producing due to my aggressive alcoholism. I was contacted by a couple whom I had worked with under a private contract to help revamp their aging marriage. Remembering how well they paid me, and having had two sober years under my belt, I decided to take a swing at the game once again. With a paycheck, I have chosen to keep the amount and disclosed, I hired a cameraman, rented sound equipment, and hired one of the horniest women I have ever met as a fluffer in case the wife was willing to let her husband get a freebie for timing reasons. We all met at the client's estate and my camera guy, Jorge, brought with him an assistant camera operator for more angles. This guy, going by the name Holly, was a piece of work. He was a crass, rude and downplaying hypocrite, but damn it, I must admit he had a gift while a camera was in his hands. Jorge warned me how much of a fruit loop he was, but as you should have expected by now, I have met several in this business. How ignorant I was to not screen him better. Holly got under my skin, faster than a Justin Bieber song, from annoying the clientele to making rude gestures and comments that disgusted the porn star I had brought. He really got us with his apparent fascination with interspecies erotica, going into great detail of a sex life he shared with his pet cat. The worst thing happened when he mentioned he had noticed the homeowners owned a pet chihuahua themselves, though it was not present, and was obviously interested in seeing it. To this extent, I had never known the couple to own a pet due to the fact it was kept in another room. At this point, both women in the room left, and the male client became infuriated with me for bringing this freak. I reminded him that Jorge was, in fact, the one who brought him in without telling me, and as we turned to face him, we found that Holly and Jorge were gone. Still upset myself, I walked and talked with my client as we entered the kitchen, to find the women mixing drinks and doing cocaine. As I proceeded to relapse due to the disturbing evening, the client's wife was holding the pet chihuahua, who had been kept in a downstairs bedroom while we were filming. However, the poor animal was weak and frail, shaking in a way I had never seen a pet do so. The client's wife, stricken with horror, showed us a bloody towel she was using to hold the pet underneath it in her arms. It became obvious what the creep had done, prompting me and the husband to charge out of the house, in an attempt to confront Holly and Jorge before they drove off of the property. Sadly, Jorge's car was gone, and we realized we hadn't even noticed them leave. Despite being forgiven myself for my involvement, I was harshly reminded why I retired. The new year has come to pass, and I have not even considered returning to porn ever again. However, I still drink to drown the horrors I have witnessed, and as an animal rights advocate, I don't care if anyone blames me. I kept in contact with the ex-clients, until their filing for divorce in December 2011, something I know I am responsible for in my heart. My once nymphomatic, cock-loving friend has since become a born-again Christian, good for her. As for Jorge or that creepy bastard Holly, no idea. Though it's probably for the best that I never see them again. My attorney called me just last week, and really demanding that I come to his office. 
As I entered the study, it was very clear he was truly upset with me. He went on to tell me that the former clients were now suing me for animal cruelty. Finding this absurd, my lawyer proceeded to level with me. A video emerged on one of my former porn sites, taking place in the extra bedroom at the ex-client's house. Having come across it, the husband forwarded it to his lawyer, and he sent it to mine along with the lawsuit. From that end, my attorney viewed it and wanted me to see it as well. In the video, which lasted 7 minutes and 6 seconds, Holly was visibly raping the chihuahua. No audio was recorded. As he was busy with the dog, someone else was definitely holding the camera. I naturally pointed out that he and Jorge had sneaked into the room at some point to do it, but as my lawyer skipped to the 6 minute mark, my throat went straight into my lungs. I was horrified to watch the cameraman turn the camera around to show it was, in fact, my drunken self, smiling and enjoying the event just as much as Holly was. Despite the obvious fact I had not been drinking for two years, nor had I ever met Holly until that night, the damning evidence was right there in front of me. Investigators are searching for the rapist himself, but I know, as I sit here in county waiting for my court date, that they'll never find him. Things have gotten worse since then, as my insanely depressed mother and my now ex-girlfriend came to visit, informing me that Jorge was found dead in Atlanta, Georgia from an overdose. They went on to say this would be the only time they ever visit, and I am now dead to my family. The stinging pain of knowing that footage is out there somewhere. The fact Holly is still out there. I am a raging alcoholic. These things add to the facts I now accept. A. I should rot in here. B. I should never have returned to the porn industry. C. I should never have touched alcohol that night.